Hello everyone. Today I will be teaching you how to set up a Firelight MS4424B Fire Alarm Control Panel. I would like to say that this panel does not include a code option or audible silent feature. However, this panel does have the features to silence the alarm alone. In order to operate this Fire Alarm Control Panel, you need one of these following tools. You're going to need a flat screwdriver that looks like this. Basically, why you need this is in order to access the turn and move for the fire alarm control panel. The turn and moves are flat screw right here. If you can see it, but the camera's not getting too blurry. Yeah, no, my I'll show it later. But anyway, let's get to the point for the video. So, uh, then you need six of these resistors right here. Um, this is a uh, 4.7 ohms, one and a half watt. 5% tolerance resistors. This is the type of resistor you need. Oh, hold on, let me see if I can get the camera not too blurry out this. This is what the resistor you need. So basically this resistor is used to at the end of each device lines of circuit. So, what this does is tells the control panel that this line is complete and if it just goes missing, your fire alarm control panel will go into trouble. This is basically helpful to, to indicate any broken line in the circuit, so there you have that. So you need like six of these, which I have over here. What's up next is that you need two 12 volts, 7 amp sealed lead acid battery. So this is the battery you will need to hook up to your fire alarm control panel. Um, the fire alarm control panel should come up with these and these. So basically, I will show you later on how to wire it. And then last at least, you need a power cord that looks like this right here. You need a power cord and the end of it needs to be cut. So for people who doesn't know electrical wiring, uh, this is hot, this is neutral this is round and remember that because it's gonna say it on the fire alarm control panel and you need to put it in the right way in order to use it anyhow let me get into explaining okay right here is where you're gonna connect your power cord so basically if you can see in the sticker behind it if this is a transformer it will say hot neutral and ground once again for the people who doesn't understand these coloration which i recommend you understand now is that this is hot this is neutral this is ground so simple as that you're gonna take this and you're gonna unscrew this with this flat screwdriver I think I already unscrew it. Right. And then you're gonna put your wire here. Make sure your wire is straight so it can fit in. Because if it's not that straight, it's not gonna fit in. Now you wanna keep it in and you want to avoid shorting the board because if you short the board, it's gonna be damaged permanently and I don't think you can fix it. So be careful with that and make sure you wire it the right way. Alright, after you wire this in, you want to make sure that this goes through the knockout first and the other end goes to the other end because if you don't, it's not going to fit in. So make sure you put this through the knockout first and then you wire it like this. So after you wire it, you want to give it a little test to make sure it works. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, where's the cord? There you go. Three, two, one. All right, all of those colors means there's trouble because the resistor isn't in right now. But this is what it looks like, once again, if you're wondering. Sorry if the camera's a little blurry, but after that, you want to unplug it before you service the panel because you do not want to get electrocuted. So, just a heads up on that. So, after that, you confirm the panel works, just make sure you unplug it before you service it or do anything with it. I mean, unless you know what you're doing. So, um, up here, on the very left, the first row of tournaments, 
this is basically a power interrupter or power resetter. So you can use this right here for the door magnet, or if you have a smoke detector that requires four wires, you can just use this, which I have right here. So it's a four wire right there. But anyway, that's what basically this is for. Right here, this is the notification appliance circuit. So there's two over here. This one can go from one line, the other can go to the other line. You want to make sure there's resistors on both ends because if you don't, you see that um, little um, circuit trouble? I don't know if the camera can get out of blurry mode for a little bit. It's blurry. Okay, there you go. You see it? If you don't have the resistors on those, that will go off. Uh, same thing over here, but for these, which you saw earlier. So, um, yeah, so this part of the side is for uh, initiating devices such as pull stations here. Right here. And once again, the first over here in the middle is for these. So, now you know how this works. For the rest, um, that's a piezo right there where it makes all the bleeping noise. And this is the battery. This is important because you will need a battery. Otherwise, your panel will be staying in trouble and be making obnoxious noises. So, uh, <laughs> just letting you know. So, oh yeah, to wire the battery, you want to make sure you put the positive and negative over here. And then make sure you have a loop so that when you plug it in, you see a spark and you see a little beep, the panel will turn on. So... That's why you need the battery. So, I'm going to put the battery up here. And I'm going to get into how to wire the notification points. So it's pretty simple. So, let's say you want to wire this up. So, what you want to do, you look in the back. And, oh, excuse me, I'm going to have to take this out because sometimes I don't, I can't see. Hold on. Give me a second. Alright, so on, on the back of each device, it's supposed to tell you where risk goes risk. So, so this side is negative and this side is positive. So you want to put your positive right here and your negative right here. And if you want to go to the next line circuit, it's simple. You just put the same wire and then you put it to the next device, which is right here. It's simple. Just make a loop. And at the last device, you want to put a resistor at the end. It's pretty simple. So, all you got to do is make sure um, the wire you're putting here is not touching each other. Because if you do that, it's going to short. So, you want to avoid that. And you, you, want to, you want to put it like this. You want to put it like this. Something like that. And you tighten the screw so you can put the resistor in place. This is useful so that the fire panel can see, oh, there's a resistor in this line, and it doesn't go in trouble. So, there's that. It's simple to wire. Same thing as um, the pulse station over here. So, there's two turnover here, and at each end of the device, you put the resistor here, and you tighten the screw, and it's the same thing pretty much. So, now I'm going to finish wiring this up really quick. And I'm going to get back to the video. Alright guys, I have finished wiring my fire alarm. So let's get on to it. So over here is my real lock amber strobe. And my sister sister classic. It's the multi candela horn strobe. And this is the BG-12. And this is the fire alarm control panel that we were talking about earlier. But take a look inside. So inside, we have two knot wire going, one going here and the other one going here. I will explain why right now there's two different devices instead of fire them. Because I have this set on supervisory and one of the jumps was cut off, you can use this as zone four as a supervisory. I will demonstrate that in a second. So if you're not using any alarm, you put a resistor on there and you don't wire anything up to it so that it will not put your alarm into trouble. Besides the point, uh, I want to indicate one thing. This fire alarm control panel, if it's plugged in, is output FWR, which means full wave rustified. So what that means is that instead of DC or AC, it outputs FWR. So 
Some firearms are not designed to handle FWR, and you have to check the back of these devices or the manual instruction of each product. Both of these can handle FWR, which is why I'm using them right now. And another thing, if you want to use DC or something like that, what we gotta do is disconnect the um, fire alarm from a power source and only use battery. The thing is, you're gonna get in trouble each time you reset the system. And you know, the best thing you can get is probably another fire alarm control panel that can do filter DC. So uh, besides that, we're gonna test this. So um, on that note, this fire alarm is set on verification. Meaning that when I pull this, it's gonna wait a few seconds and then it's gonna sound not off. So, uh, oh, before I get started, I got one thing to tell you. If you have entered the flashing light, do not watch this video. Anyway, three, two, one. And that's how you silence the fire alarm right there. You press tone silence and alarm silence. Now when the pulsation is pulled, you gotta make sure it's reset. Otherwise, if you reset the system, it's gonna go back to your alarm. Now, the focus here, this, this here, is just to test to make sure both of them work. But now we're gonna go and focus this on this device here. So, the way this works is that you cut the jumper, which is behind here. I can't show you right now, but the distressors, I think you can see it in this video right here. So what you do is set um, one of the switches down to supervisory, and make sure you have one of the jumpers up there cut off. There's a jumper right behind him here. You gotta cut one of them off in order to have the supervisory to work. But I'm going to demonstrate how the supervisory works by shooting a circuit. So, don't do what I'm doing unless you know what you're doing, okay? There we go. Put tone silence to be, um, silence the piezo. And you can see that the supervisory knack is flashing right now. And to stop it from flashing, you just put alarm silence, and there we go. Basically how it works. Now to reset the system, you want to make sure all the pulsation, which just one is reset. And we want to make sure um, there's nothing pulled or activated. And once you've done that, you just click system reset. And there we go. That's basically how this fire alarm control panel works. Uh, this is the prior panel MS4424B. This has been a demonstration. Thank you for watching this demonstration. If you like this demonstration, make sure you like the video, comment, and subscribe. Also, there will be more videos of fire alarms in the future. At this moment, this is just a setup and demonstration. In the future, I will be making fire alarm content if I'm not that busy. Anyway, I hope you all have a safe day. And take care of yourself and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.